Welcome back to another edition of Inside Career Technical Education, and I am one of the hosts of this program, Ann Baldwin, joined again by President and CEO of YTI Career Institute and Porter and Chester Institute, Jim Beloga. That's a lot. It is a lot. It's a lot. And there's a lot going on. There is. There really is. But, you know, the good news is at um, both of these institutions, you really have had to pivot since last March, you know, Jim, when it comes to COVID-19. And um, there's just, there's still a way to do this. There's a way to attend these technical programs safely. And you've really done that at both uh, YTI and PCI. So let's talk a little bit about that. If there are people out there, maybe they've been downsized. Um, Maybe they, you know, want to start a new career because we've heard so much lately in the news about essential workers of which you train these folks. So let's talk about how you've had to pivot um, as the head of these organizations during COVID. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think from an education perspective, I mean, we've basically moved to a completely residential or on-ground model, education delivery model to one where lectures online and um, the labs are on ground. And uh, we're doing that, obviously, to, uh, to maintain, um, uh, you know, the ability to have folks um, not be on campus every day, if you will. And so we're trying to minimize the frequency which they're getting exposed. Um, obviously, we're following all the infection control protocols as well when they're on campus. But uh, that's the big thing that we've done. And we've, we've pivoted back in um, the week of March 16th. We pivoted to uh, taking the school online um, from a lecture perspective. And then in June... Uh, we, we then were allowed to bring students back on campus for, uh, for their on-ground um, uh, tangible um, technical training in our industry-modeled labs. And, um, and, you know, and, so, and so that's what we've been up to. And, and you know, again, obviously, you know, throughout all this, you know, we, we have had students who are interested in, in coming to school because they, they've either just graduated from high school or they've been downsized or, you know, they've um, they've decided that what they're doing, they don't like to do anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so for a whole, uh, you know, a whole host of uh, reasons, um, you know, and, and so, you know, what we've done is we've also transitioned all of our student support services, um, you know, people uh, who work in our admissions area, or work in our educational funding area, or work in our career services area, um, you know, uh, or our student services area. I mean, all those folks are now working remotely and, uh and what we've had to do is really, you know, beef up, um, you know, our um, our ability to um, interact with people, um, you know, on the internet, um, as well as beef up our website. So right, we've been, we've been pretty busy. You you've done that. So really, what we're talking about here is if you're looking for information or you want to start the application process, as Jim just alluded to, there are still real people that are going to help you through this every step of the way. So the most important part about this conversation really is to start, and that's at the websites, which is porterchester.edu and yti.edu. Edu, And that really is where you will get guidance through the very easy step-by-step process. Um, someone will reach out to you shortly after you complete that process. Uh, and, you know, it's from start to finish, Jim. It's from getting people enrolled and into the classes. And you mentioned that you've had to pivot a lot to online learning, but a lot of these career paths that we're talking about, there's a hands-on component that can't be taught online, whether it's automotive, whether it's practical nursing, um, veterinary technology, um, you, you name it. I mean, there's just so many things that have to be taught hands-on in your industry model labs, which is also still happening, but you've kind of spaced it out. I know I was up at Rocky Hill the other day and uh, your cosmetology students, um, they're working on, you know, not dummies, but, you know, those heads that you put on a pole, and they're still getting the practical hands-on. They're spaced out. Everyone's wearing their protective gear, their masks. So it really still is a safe environment, and um, there's such a need in all these industries, especially let's go back to the practical, practical nursing during COVID and look at the demand in the healthcare system. It's just, it's unbelievable. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the other things that we've had to do um, or, th- you know, as well in terms of our curriculum is, is that we have um, pivoted and uh, we are moving to um, also supplement the curriculum with um, uh, simulation and simulation software so so that students are um, able to um, experience that. So so if we do have, um, you know, further shutdowns, um, 
or, or for the reductions in terms of the people who can be, you know, in a group, if you will, um, you know, we'll, we'll still have the availability of, of some simulation software to help them. Um, they'll still end up in the, the hands-on um, industry model labs to do their, you know, their, their technical training and their technical education skill development. But, um, you know, we, we are trying to supplement that so that they, they do have the ability to use some simulation. Um, well, you know, and speaking of simulation, when I was in Rocky Hill, um, a couple of weeks ago, they were putting together, um, simulation Anne, named after me. No, I don't think so. Cause she's got an E on her name and I don't, but really, truly amazing technology. I mean, this thing was like a human being, you know, laying there and you know, it's, it breathes, it's eyes blink, it's anatomically correct. Trust me. And you know, all these things that now you're going to have these av- available at so many of your campuses for your, um, for your nursing students, it really is just incredible. Yeah. I mean, we, we, yeah, we just bought, um, 10 high fidelity mannequins and, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, they're, uh, basically named Anne with an E. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they're, they're anatomically correct. So, um, there are, you know, there's inter- interchangeable parts, which is, which is, you know, pretty, pretty interesting. Um, but you know, the, the, the reality of the situation is, is what, what, um, you know, uh, I think is great about it is, is that, uh, you know, direct patient care Mm -hmm. and clinical experience is important. Um, but it's interesting because, you know, you don't always, um, always, you're not always able to, um, uh, encounter every possible situation. And, um, and, and so using simulation allows you, um, an enhanced educational experience, uh, in my opinion, because you can then model out things that you may not, um, see in, in the real world or in practice because they're infrequent. So for us, I think it's, it's a great step forward where we're now really helping to develop, um, the, the technical skills of our students, uh, by helping them uh, really get exposed to things that they may not be able to see in a clinical um, environment just because of the fact that they're infrequent in occurrence. Right. Right. Now let's talk about affordability. We've talked about this on this podcast before, you know, attending a uh, four year school, college, whatever, you want, whatever you want to call it. And now, you know, all of these students and I feel so badly for them. So many of them are paying to go to a four year university and they're sitting in front of their laptops at home. But affordability, what if that's a concern for somebody who says, you I'd like to do this, but can I afford it? Yeah, no, it's, it's a great question. And, and, um, you know, we have a, a dedicated team of educational funding specialists that are, um, they're no longer on our campuses physically, although they do go back from time to time to, to meet with students. Um, but they are available remotely. And, um, you know, I would encourage everybody to, to, um, you know, if you're interested, apply online and, and get yourself into the process and then, cause it is a process and we'll, we'll take you through that process and you'll, you'll be able to meet with a real person who will, um, who will help walk you through, um, you know, your, um, your, your sort of educational funding plan, if you will. And, um, and, and, you know, and again, I think most students who go through that, you know, um, have a really good idea of what it's going to take to go through our programs. I mean, you know, our, our, our programs are, you know, I think when I look at our programs, they're generally, um, you know, less than the cost of, you know, one year at a, at a traditional, a traditional four year, Mm -hmm. you know, university. So, um, you know, again, we've tried to, you know, be thoughtful about, um, you know, where we've positioned ourselves in, uh, in the marketplace. And, uh, you know, and I think that, um, uh, you know, when you look at the time that, uh, you know, our, our students take and, and the dollars, um, you know, I would say that, you know, we're very competitive right. um, in the higher ed, air, you know, higher ed uh, world. Right. And most of these programs can be completed in 12 months. Uh, with some of the programs, you've got the flexibility of day and evening classes. Right. Um, so start the process. Maybe your former military, you might have some a GI bill or something that may apply. So it's, it's worth taking a look at. And we should also mention that you do need um, to apply for any of these programs. You do need a high school diploma or equivalent. So if you didn't graduate from high school, now's the time to start working on your GED because that's also acceptable right. so that you can go through this process. Again, the website is porterchester.edu or yti.edu. So when is the next start? Because people need to get going. The holidays are here, but this is a great opportunity to say, let's, let's give it a shot. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, uh, the next start for us is, uh, in, at PCI, it's, uh, uh, January 18th and, um, uh, in, uh, 
at YTI, it's, uh, it's uh, the following week. So, so again, folks have until probably mid to late January. Um, you know, I'd encourage everybody to, you know, if you're interested in, in getting going to, to really, you know, get moving along because it, it is a bit of a process, um, you know, in terms of getting through our enrollment, uh, our, our enrollment process in terms of collecting the documentation and, and making sure you can get through your educational funding plan and all those things. Um, you know, and so, you know, the sooner, the sooner you can start, you know, I think that the more, the more uh, comfortable you'll be leading up to, uh, the beginning of school. And, and again, I mean, you know, we're, you know, as a student, um, you know, there's, you know, there are things that we are now requiring our students to do because, you know, we are issuing laptops and, and students need to pick those up before school starts mm-hmm. and they need to get themselves situated. Um, we do have, um, uh, support services to get them, um, situated. So when they, uh, start the first day of class, they're, they're re- ready, they're ready to go. Right. Yeah. And, and also the career services component, which is where, you know, folks in career services at both YTI and PCI follow you through the process with the goal of gainful employment. Once you graduate, that's also part of it. it it's not like you go through this program and at the end, somebody's helping you look for a job. Now this is from beginning to end, that's always the end goal. And I've talked to so many students in the program, some of them already even have jobs right. um, or getting additional training so that they can move up in that career path. So now is the time, the timing is perfect for this kind of thing when so many things have slowed down and who knows what's gonna happen in the future. If you're an essential worker in the skilled trades, you can pretty much bet that your future is going to be secure. So I think that's a good opportunity for anybody. Again, porterchester.edu and yti.edu. Jim Beloga, it's always great to see you. And uh, thanks for joining us on this podcast. And of course, we want to thank our listeners for tuning in to this edition of Inside Career Technical Education.